before getting into the geometry side of things, let's create the actual domino brick. Using the default cube, go into edit mode, and with everything selected, press G, C, 1 to move the cube up 1 meter. Next, scale it on the X and Y axis until you get a rectangular box. And make sure that the brick's flat face is facing the X axis like this. Also, move the mesh on the X axis so that the front edge of the brick is at or close to the origin of the scene. This is the point that the brick will rotate around. In the modifiers tab, add a subdivision surface modifier and set both levels to 2. Next we will add some loop cuts to the mesh. Adding loop cuts is common practice when doing subdivision surface modeling, and it's a good skill to have in practice. Add two loop cuts along the x-axis by pressing Ctrl R, and either pressing 2 or scrolling up once with the mouse wheel. Confirm by left clicking, and then right click to avoid moving the cuts. Next, with the two new loops still selected, press S followed by Y, and scale the loops until they are closer to the edges. That way the edges get more defined, and it's possible to somewhat control how rounded the mesh is. Do the same for the y-axis and the z-axis. With the basic shape of the dominant brick done, let's add a final detail. Add a single loop cut along the z-axis, then press Ctrl B to add a bevel and increase the bevel by scrolling up once on the mouse wheel. Then move the mouse until you have something like this. Then left click to confirm. Select the middle loop cut by pressing Alt and left click. Then scale it on the x-axis to make an indentation. Finally, to make the edges along the middle more defined, select one of the loop cuts with Alt and left click. Then select the other one with Shift Alt and left click. Then add a bevel with Ctrl B and increase it like before. Rename the domino object to domino1 and rename the collection to dominoes. Head over to the shading workspace and add a material to the object and name it domino1 as well. I will create a material that consists of two colors, one for each part of the brick. Add a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. And connect the generated socket to the mapping node. By using a separate XYZ node, it's possible to create a gradient along the X, Y or Z axis. And with a color ramp, we can control that gradient. Set the color ramp to constant, and set the white color to 0 0.5. Here you can use any colors you want. I will use white metallic and gold. Once you're happy with the material, duplicate the object with Shift D, and rename it to Domino 2. Press the 2 in the material, and rename the material to Domino 2 as well. Then swap the places of the colors in the color ramp. This way we can create some easy variations once we instance the dominoes. Disable the dominoes collection, then add a new collection. And in the new collection, add a Bezier curve. This curve will be the path that we instance the dominoes along. So head over to the Geometry Nodes workspace and add a new Geometry Nodes tree. This curve is made up of two control points, so if we were to use an instance of points node on it, we would only get two instance objects, one for each control point. However, with a resample curve node, we can add or remove control points along the curve procedurally. If the node is set to count, it will resample the curve to consist of that many control points, independent of the length of the curve. Sometimes this is what you want, but for our purposes, we will use the length instead. Using length means that the amount of control points along the resampled curve is dependent on both the length of the curve and the length value in the node, and the length value is the distance between each resampled control point. 
I will set it to 0.12, but depending on the size and shape of your dominoes, other values might work better. Next, add a instance on points node and a join geometry node. The join node is needed for us to still see the curve, and it makes it easier to modify. Drag the dominoes collection from the outliner into the geometry node tree. Enable separate children, so that each object in the collection can be instanced individually, and connect it to the instance socket. Set the scale to something smaller. I will set it to 0.2, but again, other values might work better for different sized bricks. As you can see, the bricks follow the curve and are all standing up. However, they are all facing the same way. So let's fix that with a curved tangent node. A tangent is an imaginary line passing through any point along the curve, at an angle that is following the curve at that point as closely as possible. Technically, the tangent consists of two points along the curve that are infinitely close together, but for our purposes, we really only need to know that the tangent can be thought of as the alignment of each point along the curve. If we connect the curve tangent node to the rotation socket of the instance on points node, we can see that the bricks do seem to follow the tangents of the curve. However, we just want them to align along one axis. To do that, add an align Euler to vector node, connect the curve tangent to the vector socket, then connect the align node to the rotation socket of the instance on points node. The align Euler node takes a vector, or a direction, that points should be rotated towards, and it then constrains the rotation to only affect one axis, the x axis in our case. With the instancing of the dominoes done, switch over to material preview. As you can see, only one of the bricks has been instanced, even though we have two bricks in the collection. A quick fix for randomly selecting the different objects is to enable pick instance and connect a random value node to the instance index. And setting the max value to something relatively large. That way each point is using a random value to determine which object to instance. Now that we have our expandable line of dominoes, let's create the falling over effect. Add a rotate instances node. Playing around with the values of the x, y and z rotation tells us which axis that we should affect, the y axis in this case. So in order to only manipulate the y axis, add a combine x, y, z node. Adjust the y value of the combine x, y, z node until the bricks looks like they are resting atop of each other. We will use this value as the maximum allowed rotation in the next step. And again, this value might differ depending on the size and shape of your bricks. Next, add an index node, a math node set to add, and a map range node set to smoother step. Connect the index node to the from min of the map range node, as well as to the add node. Then connect the add node to the from max of the map range node. Take the y value from the combine x, y, z node and set it as the 2 max value of the map range node. Then connect it to the y socket of the combine x, y, z node. What we need to do now is adjust the value of the add node and the value of the map range node. If we set the value of the add node to 1 and gradually increase the map range value, we can see that each brick is rotated in turn. That's where the add node comes in. Because by increasing the value, we can create a fall off or gradient that affects more than just one brick. This part might require some tinkering to get it to look right, and you will likely either have clipping bricks, or bricks that start to fall too early. However, once it's animated, it won't be noticeable. And that's a node setup. One thing I will do is drag the value socket of the map range node over to an empty socket of the group input. That way I can control the value out here in the modifiers tab. I will do the same for the value of the add node, in case I want to easily adjust the falloff. Now if you are into edit mode, you can create any curve you want, by rotating and moving control points, and by extruding new points by pressing E. The dominoes will procedurally fill up the length of the curve, with the correct alignment. I recommend only rotating the control points on the C-axis, and keeping the C positions at zero. However, it is possible to create slopes too. Lastly, to animate the bricks, you can either keyframe the fall value in the modifier,
or you can use a driver. I will use a driver since it's independent of the length of the curve, so I can make adjustments to the curve at any time. To do this, in the fall value, type hashtag frame divided by 2. The division determines the speed of the animation, and higher divisions mean slower speed. Also, the amount you divide with will vary depending on the frame rate that you have set your product to. Now all that is left to do is to press play on the timeline and watch it go. I hope you had fun following along in this video and that you learned something new. See you next time.